Welcome to God, Coffee, and COVID. This is a video podcast series that's being provided by the Swift Current and Area Ministerial Association. The weekly podcasts speak to issues that have arisen during the COVID-19 pandemic. Our conversations come from a, a spiritual and biblical perspective. Each week features different pastors from the community, and today I have with me three friends. Linda Hall. Linda has been serving the Southwest Lutheran pa Parish, which consists of St. Olaf and Swift Current, Scandia in Cabri, and Kyle Lutheran Parish for the past 12 years. Mike Smart. Mike is the lead pastor of Trailview Alliance Church and has been on staff there since 2006. He has served with the Christian and Missionary Alliance for 25 years. Kevin Snyder. Kevin is the chair of the ministerial and has been the lead pastor at Eastside Church of God for 15 years. And I'm Annette Taylor. And I've been in ministry with First United Church for six years and I'm also a member of the executive of the ministerial. So today, we want to discuss an issue that has been a, a major topic of conversation in our churches over the past few weeks. And that is the question of reopening our buildings. In phase three of their reopening plan, the government of Saskatchewan has included reopening of places of worship. Now this, this third phase begins on Monday, June the 8th, and the government's plan has also included many guidelines that they have put in place to ensure the safety of our congregations. One of these guidelines is a limit, limit to the number of people that can be present, and right now our understanding is that the maximum is 30. Now, each of our congregations is now deciding whether or not their church building will be open to the public and whether they will resume worshiping in person on Sunday mornings. So I wanna begin our discussion with the, the first question that each congregation needs to consider. What are your main reasons for wanting to reopen at this time and how would you and the members of your congregation answer that question. Mike, what kinds of things are you considering? Well, for us here at Trailview, uh, and I'm sure for many people, we're just, we're missing each other. Uh, the church is meant to be relational in nature. That's what ministry is about. And so uh, that's the thing. We can reach out by phone, but it's just not the same. So I think the main reason for us wanting to reopen uh, whenever we can is to reconnect with people. That's what we're missing. I think I would say ditto to that because uh, that seems to be the the major thing that we are hearing from people. They'll you know they'll come by the church for a visit and they'll often say, "Boy, we miss you guys," or "We're sure missing meeting together." And uh, uh, yeah, the longer it goes, like the yearning seems to grow stronger for people to uh, mm. just be able to connect. Yeah, it really hits at the heart of what the church does, right? In that caring for one another. And so much of that caring comes with being in the presence of one another. So yeah, it's it's been challenging for all of us, I think, during this time. Yes, I, I know at our church, one of the things that people are talking about is uh, is the singing. They miss the communal singing and, uh, and just the opportunity to connect before and after the service. So with all of these reasons for, for opening, we also need to consider why it may not be a good idea. So what are what are some of the, the main reasons that you're considering as you think about why you shouldn't reopen? Annette, I think, yeah, I think uh, that this has been a real struggle for us uh, because like you say, you have the yearning to want to get together, but then also the responsibility. Like I, I uh, 
that weighs heavy on me. I think perhaps all of us have seen different newspaper articles of churches that uh, opened and, uh, you know, had a choir and somebody got infected and 20 people in the choir got infected or, or whatever. And I think none of us want those kinds of headlines that we were the place uh, that, uh, you know, where that happened. So the responsibility uh, weighs really heavy on me. And I, I also uh, just find, I think this isn't going to be an easy thing for us as pastors and leaders, because we have people all along the continuum some that are, like you say, so itching and wanting to get together because here in Southwest Saskatchewan, we haven't had many cases and they don't, they don't see the danger or the threat. So they're ready to come as soon as the door is open. And then we have uh, many others at the other end of the spectrum that uh, also feel that responsibility. So it's not, an, it's not an easy question. And I think, so the responsibility I think the other thing that we are really wrestling with is uh, just our volunteer capacity. When, when we have such a low number of 30 people in, off, in our staff capacity, um, to be able to provide for that and provide all the disinfecting needs as well as just be able to uh, uh, provide the number of services, it becomes really, really difficult. So those are some of the, the things that are weighing on us. I would add, uh, just logistically, it's a it's a nightmare. Um, we do want to reopen, but because of the numbers that the government are providing, we're forced to wrestle through questions like, well, then who's included in that number? Like, you know, is it the elderly that are going to be allowed to come, or or do we go on a rotating schedule? And uh, do we turn like, how do we turn people away when we reach the maximum? And are people, are younger families going to come when we're not able to offer childcare? Like, there's a lot of factors going into these kinds of reopening discussions. Yeah. I think there's a bunch of education that needs to go along with all of this. And I mean, as we're, as the province is slowly beginning to open up again, I think people are, are beginning to learn new behaviors. And so by, by not reopening right away and maybe being a little bit hesitant in that, we're allowing people to, in their regular everyday life, to, to experience some of these new protocols. And then when, when they begin to come to church, it might be a little bit more accepting. Because I, I just, I have a, I don't want to wear the hat of a police officer enforcing the law, right? I'd rather be the person of grace and mercy who welcomes. And so, yeah, I think that there's some education that needs to go along with all of this idea of opening or not reopening. And Linda, that's, that's going to be really hard uh, yeah. for people because I think in all of our congregations, there's a culture. Um, yes. It's different than a business, which is transactional. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we are far more relational and uh, interconnected. And so there's a culture that's developed and no matter what we say, uh, it's very easy in those times when you see, see people to default back to what's been the pattern, what's been the yes. culture. Yes. And uh, that is going to be very difficult because all of us value warmth, all of us value uh, you know, that acceptance and welcoming and uh, all the regulations make it very difficult to have that kind of atmosphere. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah, which, which leads really well into into the next question, like if we, if we decide not to reopen, then are there ways that we can still meet the needs of our congregation? And probably you're already doing some things that have been working for you. And are there other things that, uh, that you might be able to try? Linda, do you have any thoughts on Yeah, on well, that? it's been interesting in some of the conversations that I've had. I mean, and as you say, Mike, connecting by the phone is never as good as in person, but a lot of phone calls of late. And, and I've heard many times, I, watched, I went to three church services this morning. So, I mean, there's <laughs> many people out there who are taking advantage of, I mean, a lot of the online worship services that are being offered and I think it's stretched us as churches to be able to to you know that that's not your fallback worship it is your worship now and so to, to continue to do that the connections through the YouTube and live streaming and Facebook and all of those things um, 
recordings of the services. We, we've done that as well, sending out DVDs to people who, who can access it that way. But I think one of the, the key things that I've really been focusing on as I've been making phone calls is encouraging the people that, that are members of our congregations and to encourage their friends as well to recognize that it's really everyone's ministry. It doesn't just belong mm -hmm. to the pastor and the church, but it's all of our ministry to reach out and love and care for one another and to hear the, you know, the challenges that people are facing, to hear the joys that they've experienced in this time of pandemic. pandemic. So to be able to, to lift up some of those ways that each one of us are, are part of the church and the church is not the building, it's the people doing what Christ taught us to do and following in that, that way. I know that's been true in my congregation. I certainly haven't been the one making the most phone calls. We have mm -hmm. a very active uh, um, pastoral care uh, committee that has just been really amazing reaching out to those, especially those who don't have email and don't have uh, access to, uh, to computer or anything like that. And so it's very helpful to have, to have the, them doing that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of the things that uh, COVID has taught us is to rethink um, ministry and what does that look like. And I, I love the way one guy put it, I just heard recently, he said, you know, is our goal gathering or connecting? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the things that we have found is that even though we can't gather, we can still connect. And I think that that is a uh, uh, important thing about ministry, even in the midst of this, is being able to continue to foster ways in which we can connect. Um, the other thing I'm interested in is uh, all of us experience slumps in the summer. Uh, what do they say now? The average person that's going to church, uh, I think in Canada, is about 1.8 times per month or something like that. And uh, I know for a lot of our folks, the whole idea of gathering uh, together is if they couldn't, if they were on vacation or they were out at the lake on the weekend and they couldn't gather for a worship, worship service, they never thought about maybe checking in online. But it'll be interesting to see as people have been connecting through the online services all the year, that now they can connect even when they're out at the lake. And so I'm kind of curious to see if there's maybe even greater engagement uh, during the summer than what we've typically seen in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about is so much of the really deep connecting and engagement takes place in small groups, mm -hmm. and uh, and this this particular. Um, you know, vehicle that we're using right now, Zoom, is is really uh, really good for small groups. Mm -hmm. I know my my Bible study has actually increased in size um, during the past uh, couple of months as people have realized that it's a lot easier to uh, to connect from home. And uh, so, who knows? Who knows? Um, and we've talked a little bit about this already. How we're going to meet the the needs of those who are unable to or or are just not comfortable with uh, with coming to in person worship. We've been we've been doing that already, right? Trying to connect with those who are unable to uh, um, to be with us to get even even um, in our live streaming or our Zoom services. We've even been mailing paper. Yes, <laughs> yeah, time. mail mail. Who thought? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I think one thing, Annette, what I might be able to uh, talk a little bit about is up till now, I think we've been talking about the Sunday morning worship experience, but mm -hmm. ministry happens all the time, not just on Sunday morning. And mm -hmm. I think as the government opens up the, the numbers of people that are allowed to meet that our midweek ministries probably will, for the most part, happen live and on site. But it's just at this point, we're not sure exactly how the Sunday morning part will look. So, so that will, we're going to keep on doing what we're doing for the Sunday mornings in the interim. But some of our midweek programs, uh, because we're not exceeding the number in, in some of those areas, we'll be able to do in person again. 
Yes, exactly. There's a there's a phased approach that we can use, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think I just want to lift up too that we can, I've been encouraging our people to, you know, I, as you said, Mike, it's kind of been focused on that Sunday morning gathering, but all of the ways that we connect with other agencies in the community as well, that has been kind of, there's been a bit of a roadblock place there and how we do that. And so encourage them to find ways to connect with, you know, the food banks and, and all of those things as well as part of our, our ongoing ministry in the community. I mean, it's not only focused on our church as, as, a, as an entity in, in and of itself, but rather how we, we care for the community at large as well. There's one thing out of this is I think that all of our ministries will have changed as a result of COVID. It's kind of a, an opportunity to redefine ourselves. I know we've been talking about how, um, I don't know if we can never go back to not having as, an online presence like mm -hmm. that that has been something that uh, I think has been sort of thrust upon us where we never felt totally comfortable, but are now recognizing how important that is. And, and I think also we're just so early in this whole new reality um, that it's hard to know exactly what it's going to look like. And I heard a great statement where the guy said, don't jump over discovery to get to certainty. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't think any of us really know what the certainty of what the future looks like, but we're in discovery time. And what is it going to be like to meet the needs of those vulnerable sectors and those people that can't come out and kids when you can't necessarily put them together? Uh, you know, all of those things we don't have all the answers for, uh, but uh, a great opportunity to discover and uh, to discover from each other as well. Yeah, I think it's it's the book of Acts all over again, right? The birth of the church and they're going out and they're trying things that didn't work, come back, regroup, go out and try another thing, right? I mean, we're 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 writing a, a book of the Bible, right? We're we're the new the new book of Acts. <laughs> well, the book we're writing might not be that readable. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's great. What a what a what a wonderful uh place to uh, to end and I want to thank you thank you all for your for your thoughts and contributions to this discussion it's it's a question that that each denomination and each congregation has to answer for themselves and I hope that it has been helpful to hear what um, what other clergy and congregations are considering as as we all make this important decision I invite you now to pray with me. Gracious God, we, we pray that each church's decision around reopening will be made with your guidance. We pray for spiritual, mental, and physical health for our congregations and for our community. May all that we do be guided by your unconditional and everlasting love. Amen. Amen.